Hello and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the really cute baby owl hat. This is a free pattern available over on redheart.com. You can find a link to it right down there in the video notes. And while you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say, so that everybody knows this video is awesome. I'm going to show you from start to finish how to make this really great hat. So let's jump in. We begin the hat with the crown of the hat, which is the top of the hat. So we begin with the magic circle and then double crochet, 12 double crochets into that magic circle. For a magic circle, lay the, the tail of the yarn in the palm of your hand, wrap the yarn around your forefinger and middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. When you cross over, take your hook, go underneath the front one, and grab the back and pull up a loop. Now, where the yarn had crossed over, go ahead and pinch it, because you're not gonna let that loop right there go closed. Congratulations, you just created a magic loop. Now all we need to do is a chain one. So I'm going to put my fingers in the loop so it doesn't collapse on me. Chain one, and then work 12 double crochets directly into this loop. Once you have 12 double crochets, they'll look something like this. You will take the tail that we had in the palm of our hand before and you're gonna pull it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna tighten that circle up around those double crochets. You could give it a really nice pull. When the entire circle of the hat is complete, we will go back, we will pull this once again to make sure it's nice and tight and we will weave in our ends in the back to make sure we don't get a hole later on. Once we have pulled that nice and snug, you're gonna go ahead and join to this first double crochet we completed. So I'm gonna put my hook directly into that stitch right there, it's the top of the double crochet we just completed, and I'm gonna join with a slip stitch. So I've created my circle. Now the next portion of any circle, when we're doing something that wants to go flat, we're going to increase exponentially this round, meaning we're gonna put two double crochets into each double crochet this entire round. To do that, we begin with a chain one, and then we jump in and we start doing a double crochet directly into the same stitch that we joined with a slip stitch. And not only do we put one double crochet, we put two double crochets. We jump over to the next stitch and we're gonna put two double, two double crochets into that stitch. We will do this all the way around until we get to the very end. And at the end, we will end up with 24 double crochets. We will join with the slip stitch to the very first double crochet we completed. Once you finish this round, it's good practice to go back and count all of your stitches just to make sure you have 24. Once you've counted your stitches and made sure you have 24, go ahead and join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet. Now your work should look something like this. The next two rounds are also increase rounds, but you will only be increasing 12 stitches. To do that, you will have to do a double crochet and then two double crochets in the next stitch for round three. And then round four, you will do a double crochet and then a double crochet in the next stitch and then two double crochets in the next stitch. So what you're gonna notice is each additional round, all of the increased stitches, the two stitches into one, are going to be separated by either one double crochet, then two double crochets, and then if you make some of the larger sizes, three double crochets, and then four double crochets, so on and so forth. This is the way you create a flat circle in crochet. When all is complete, you will have a piece that looks like this. For me, I'm making the size 18 inch around. So when I got through round four, I jumped ahead to the 18 inch round five and I had another round of increases. So I had three double crochets and then two double crochets in the same stitch on my final round. Once I finish that round, I need to do even rounds of double crochet for rounds six through 12. Once I get that, I'm ready to jump to the ear flaps. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna pull this over, and you can see here, this bottom is the same 
bottom as this blue, okay? But once you start doing the even double crochets, it gets a little bit bigger. So don't think that, oh my gosh, this looks so small, it's never gonna fit. It actually gets a little bit bigger from that first initial round. Because as you're doing your, your plain double crochet rounds, it takes it just a little bit to start cupping up on itself. But then once it does, once you start doing your even rounds where you're not doing any special increases, it starts to cup in on itself and it begins to look like a hat. Now what you're gonna notice here is I put a stitch marker at the join of each round. And there are two reasons why I did this. One, it helps me know where the last stitch was of the round, and two, it helps me so that I can count the rounds I've completed. So here's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I just finished round 12, so I'm ready to start on my ear flaps, and that's where we're gonna jump in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my hook onto my hat and flip to the next portion of my pattern. So here at the start, I still have the right side of the hat facing me, and I'm gonna begin with a chain two. And this counts as a double crochet now and throughout. And it says we're going to do a double crochet two together. Now what that means, if this counts as a double crochet, that means that stitch there is accounted for because that is already counted there. So I have to jump over here to the next stitch over, and I'm gonna do a double crochet two together. So I yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, Yarn over, go into the next stitch, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So I have three loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and draw through all three loops. So now I double crochet in the next four double crochets. So I yarn over and I'm going to the next four double crochets. So there's one, two, three, Four. All right, so I did a double crochet in the next four double crochets, and it's time to do another double crochet two together. So I yarn over, go into the next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, draw through all three loops, and I finish with a double crochet in the next double crochet and I turn. So this is gonna be the first time in my work that I'm actually turning my work because I'm working in rows, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and turn my work, do a chain one, and I'm gonna single crochet in, the, in each double crochet across. So I'm gonna end up with eight double crochets. So this chain one does not count as a stitch, so I'm gonna go ahead, put my single crochet in that first one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and remember our first chain three counts as a stitch. So I'm actually gonna go into the stitch itself. So I'm going to the top chain of the chain three and I'm gonna do my single crochet. So there's my eight single crochets. Turn my work. I'm gonna chain two, remember, that's gonna count as my double crochet, so I will not work into that first stitch. I'm gonna do a double crochet two together into the next two stitches. You'll see here, it's starting to really take shape. And now I'm going to double crochet in each of the next two single crochets, so there's one and there's two. Now I'm gonna double crochet two together over the next two and I finish with a double crochet. Chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, and then I'm going to single crochet in each stitch to the end, and I'm gonna have six. And remember, my very last one, I will be putting a single crochet into the top of that chain two. I think I called it a chain three last time, but it is a chain two. So the top of my chain two, chain one and, or chain two and turn, I apologize do a double crochet two together, just like we started the last couple times for uh, our chain, after our chain twos. So double crochet two together, and we're gonna do that twice this time. So I did it once, do it twice, and with a double crochet, and then turn and chain one, single crochet, whoops, into the stitches, so I'm gonna have four single crochets, one, two, 
three, and then four. And I will fasten off and weave in my end. So I always do a chain one, and I'm going to leave a nice tail because it's easier to weave in longer tails. And then pull that chain through, just like that, and I have my first ear flap. Check that out. Now we have to do the second ear flap, and there's a little preparation work to this. So as you look down here, let me show you what we need to do. Now the instructions read, I need to have the hat facing me with the right ear flap facing me and the seam to the right of the ear flap. Then I have to count a number of stitches from the last stitch of the ear flap around and put a marker there. Now remember I said I'm making the size 18 circumference, so my number of stitches I have to count are 24. So I'm going to come over here and this is the last stitch of my ear flap, so I'm going to count 24 from there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So this is my 24th stitch, and I'm gonna put a marker there, and I'm just putting it into the post of the stitch. So now that I have that stitch marked off, I'm ready to start the left ear flap. So, for the left ear flap, we start it just like we did the right, only we have to attach our yarn this time. So we're going to join into the marked stitch with the same color we're using. So I'm going to join, and I'm gonna join with a slip stitch. So I join with the slip stitch, and I repeat the same instructions that I did for the right ear. So I chain two, skip that stitch, and I jump into my double crochet, two together, and work this side of the ear flap. I'm gonna finish this side of the ear flap and then show you what it looks like once it's complete. All right, so I finished the second ear flap. Let me show you what it looks like. And as you can see here, here's the right one, here's the left one. And if I were to lay it down flat, let's see if I can fold it. This is how it would look from the front of the piece. Look how cute that is. Once you finish the ear flaps, it's time to put the border around the hat. And it's really super easy. You're gonna find roughly the center portion between the two ear flaps on the back of the hat, and you're gonna join with your main color. So I'm gonna join with my slip stitch, just like I did before, and I join with my slip stitch. Now I chain one, and I'm gonna do a single crochet into each stitch to the ear flap. When I get to the ear flap, I'm gonna put one single crochet at the end of each single crochet row, and three single crochets at the end of each double crochet row. I'll do that all the way around, and when I'll finish off, with a slip stitch to the very first single crochet I just completed. This will add a really nice border and finishing touch to the bottom of your hat. Now that you've finished your border, your hat should look a little something like this. As I put down my hat, you can see right here I join with my slip stitch to the first single crochet, and I have a nice single crochet border around the entire hat. It just adds that little bit of a finish. Now I do have a lot of ends to tuck in, but that's okay, that's perfectly normal. But you will notice that I did not crochet over my ends to tuck them in. It's really important that you take the time to thread this onto a tapestry needle and weave in your ends that way to tuck in your ends because this is gonna be something that's worn by a little kid and it's really important that you don't just crochet over your ends to weave them in because that really doesn't do a very good job. Now it's time to make all of the little extra bits that will make this hat into a really cute owl hat. And we're gonna start off with the eyes. To begin with the eyes, we're obviously going to make two of them, but we begin with a magical loop or an adjustable ring just like we did before. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before when I started the hat, and I'm going to do my adjustable ring. Once I have my adjustable ring in place, I'm gonna go ahead and chain one and do 12 double crochets into this ring. And you'll notice I'm using the color that I want to be in the, the center of the eye or the pupil of the eye. So I'm using a really beautiful pewter gray color. And I'm just doing 12 double crochets all into the ring. Now on my last double crochet, I finished that, but when I go to join with a slip stitch, I'm not gonna yarn over with my gray, I'm actually going to pull in my white and yarn over and pull through to join with the slip stitch using my white color. So now it's on my hook ready to be used. I go ahead, I chain one, and just like we did with the hat, we're going to increase this round by putting two double crochets into each double crochet all the way around. 
At the end of the round, we will go ahead, join with a slip stitch of the first double crochet, and then finish off. And we will have an eye that looks something like this. If I set this aside, I'm gonna pull it in, and we get this really great looking eye. Where the center are these really nice gray stitches, and the outside is the really nice white pupil. Now, one thing I will point out is that when I finish this particular eye, I totally forgot to leave a nice long tail so that I could use it to sew my eye to the hat. I I went ahead and I got overzealous and I wove in all of my ends so that I can make it nice and pretty to show you. But when you finish your eye, I want to encourage you to make sure you leave a nice long tail so that you can use that tail to sew your eye into place on the hat. If you forget to do that, just like I did, that's okay, it's not the end of the world. We'll just have an extra tail to weave in later on because we'll have to use a new strand of yarn to sew these eyes onto the hat. So go ahead and make two little owl eyes and then we're gonna jump ahead and make the cute little nose. It's so simple. The nose is one of the easiest pieces to make in this whole hat. All we're gonna do is grab some of the tan colored yarn and jump in. We're gonna start off with a nice long tail before we jump into our adjustable ring. So we do our adjustable ring just like we've been doing before, and this time we're going to chain three instead of just a chain one, and that chain three is going to count as a double crochet. After you do your chain three, we're going to do three double crochets into this ring. So there's one, two, three, and then we're gonna do three chains and then slip stitch into the ring. So it's just like we began with three chains, we did three double crochets, we end with three chains and we slip stitch into the ring. Once you do the slip stitch into the ring, go ahead and fasten off. So I chain one and I cut my yarn. I'm gonna leave a nice long tail so that I have it to weave in. So I've done that. I can pull my adjustable ring so that pulls it nice and closed and I have my cute little nose. See, I told you it was really easy to make this nose. Now let's jump in and make the ears. They are equally as easy, so I'm going to jump right in right now and do that. Let's go ahead and grab our main green color for this portion, and for the ears, you're going to make two. And we're going to start off with adjustable ring, just like before, leaving a three inch tail. So I'm gonna leave a three inch tail, do my adjustable ring, and we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. And we're gonna work three double crochets into this ring. One, two, three. And now we're gonna do a pico. Don't be scared, this is really easy. You're gonna chain three stitches and then do a slip stitch into the first chain of those three stitches. Really easy, right? And now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do three more double crochets. So one, two, three. And then we're going to chain three and slip stitch into the ring. Finish off. I'm gonna leave a nice long tail because I want to use it to sew on my ears. Pull the adjustable ring closed, and look at that, I have this cute little ear. Look at that ear, it's so adorable. Once you have both ears made, all you're going to do is make some tassels for the ears. It's really easy. First, you're gonna grab the three colors you use for the eyes and the nose. So I've got my gray and my white, and then my tan color. And I'm going to make those and do about a six inch portion. And then all I need to do is take this, fold it in half, and with the wrong side of the ear facing me, you decide which is the wrong side, I'm gonna push my hook into the loop of the pico I've created, grab the middle of those tassels, pull that through, okay, you see that so far? And now all I do is I take the loop and I just grab the tassel tails, pull up, and it makes the tassel at the top of that ear. You see that? 
Now, if you don't want to use the colors you use on the eyes and the nose, you can mix it up a little bit. Let me show you something else I've done. So I made this little ear earlier, and I made it to where I used the blue like I started off with before, which isn't even anywhere in the hat, but I thought it was pretty. And I used my main color green, and then I used the tan. You could do whatever you want. Now, once you have these in place, once they're where they need to be, you can trim it up. So you can trim this up so it's nice and close, so you you know it's not super long tails, and it looks cute. It's better to trim up after the piece is put together. Um, no, let me rephrase that. It's better to trim the tassels uh, after it's they're all put into place versus trying to get them absolutely perfect from the start. Make them a little bit extra long and then trim them up so that they're nice and neat. Once you have the tassels on the ears, you can begin to place everything the way you want it to be. So you will take your hat and you will begin to place the eyes and the nose and the ears all on the hat. And then the very last thing to do is to add the braids for um, the portion of the ears. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly. All right, so I wanna show you how to attach the eyes so that you know how to do this properly. First, you wanna have the hat down flat and with the seam in back, because that will be the back of your hat, and you want to place the eyeballs as center as possible using the front of the hat. Now remember, I did not leave a long tail on my eyeballs, so I'm using a, another thread of yarn and my tapestry needle to go ahead and sew these eyes into place. So if I want that eyeball to be there, why don't I go ahead and I'm gonna just pin it right there just to keep it where it's supposed to be and let's see if I should do it on the top also just so I don't let it move around on me because I tend to have things shift on me when I am working on it so if I have that one there and we can use our rose as a guideline I'm going to place it right about there and Let's see. That looks good so far, I think. Let's see, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm using my rows as my guides to make sure I have it as centered as possible. I love these little markers. They are handy for more than just marking stitches. All right, so I'm gonna use that as my eyeball. Let's kind of eyeball this all into place. When I do the nose, I'm gonna place it right in the center of the eyeballs. So it would go right about there. It's right in the center of the eyeballs. It actually touches the eyeballs. And I know the instructions say to add extra yarn down here to pin everything in place, but I left my tails nice and long so I can actually come and use those to pin my tails into place and or pin the, the portion of my nose into place that I need. So I'm not gonna worry about that. So do I like this placement so far? Do I like the eyeballs there and that piece there? Yeah. So let's go ahead and pin this portion into place. I'm just gonna Pin it just like this, give that in there. Make sure it's all attached, yep it is. So that's where my nose will go. And I love it. Once that's on there, I can come up here and attach the ears. So let's do the eyes first. I've thread on my white yarn and I'm coming from underneath. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up around the outside of the eye here. So I'm pulling up my tail and I'm making sure that I leave a nice, enough tail here at the other end so I can weave in my ends and I'm just going to do a basic straight stitch all the way so I'm going down I'm coming back up the next V and I'm coming down the next V see how that works I'm just using the V's as my guidelines all the way and if I do that whoops it's relatively invisible. Let's see, I think I'm in this one right here. And I'm gonna have the eyes nice and attached. And I'm using the same color yarn as I used around the, the iris of the eye. And I'm making sure that everything is nice and flat. I've tried to take into account that as I do this, things tend to shift on me, so I've pinned everything in place. Hopefully you've done the same thing, and it will be nice and easy for you. 
And I left a really nice long um, tail here that I'm using to embroider in. I guess it's not a tail, but I made the string that I'm using to embroider everything in, to sew everything into place. Um, nice and long because I didn't want to get halfway through and have it run out so it keeps snagging on the ear flap on me but I'd rather that than run out of yarn halfway through doing this right because that is no fun I don't need any more ends to weave in here let's see here right there when you get to the end you can flip this around and you can weave in your tails really easy just to make sure they aren't going to come undone. I am I'm splitting the yarn as I weave my ends in to make sure it's all in place and I have no worries of this coming unraveled or undone or falling apart. When the baby gets to wear it, snip my end nice and tight. I'm going to do that on the opposite side as well. And then I will go ahead and sew on my second eye. I'm going to sew on the eyes and the nose and then I'm going to show you how to make placement for the ears. I've sewn the eyes and the nose into place and it's time to prep and sew on my ears. So I am removing my stitch markers right here and I'm getting ready to get the ears in place. Let me move this last stitch marker. Take a look at that. How simple and cute is this? So I have my two eyeballs and my little nose and it's time to put on the ears. Now, if you remember, I told you that I did my ears with this separate color. I just wanted to play around and have a different color. And so I have my nice long tails that I will use to sew my ears into place. Now the instructions say to use a marker and using round three as my guide, so there's round three, I'm gonna place a stitch marker on either side of the hat. So there's one stitch marker and there's two stitch marker. So at those stitch markers, that's where I'm gonna place my ears. So what I can do is I can, as simple as, thread these tails directly on two my needle here and starting over here I am just gonna pop this one in and down and I'm just gonna lay it just like that to begin with and I'm gonna do the same to the other tail because I left two long tails one at the start and one at the end and I'm just coming to the other side of where that stitch marker is so there's my stitch marker there's my ear it's in place I have my two tails on the inside see that See how cute that is? All right, so I'm on the inside now. Let's take a peek at the inside. And I can go ahead, I'm not gonna make a knot, but I am gonna tie these two together. So yeah, I'm just tying it. So I did not make a knot. And the reason I'm not making a knot is you don't want a knot on the top of your head. So I just tied them together. And now I'm threading my, my needle here and I'm weaving in my tails on either side. And I am just going through the stitches, splitting the yarn itself so that it can grab on itself and hopefully not unravel. This is the best way to weave in your ends, I think. If you notice, I went down, I went back, and then I went around a little bit to have it go a long way before it can unravel. I'll do the same thing to the other end here. And I will pop it through this direction so that I don't have too thick of a um, section on my hat where I've woven it in my tails. And this one I'm just kind of going around willy-nilly, just eyeballing it, making sure that I'm going in different directions. It makes it harder for the tail to wiggle its way out if you do that. And split the yarn, make sure I'm not going to the other side. I have my, my other hand right here is on the other side, making sure I never feel that needle pop through. Snip that. Let's see what we got here. So we have our first ear. Look at that cute little ear. Oh my gosh, this is adorable. This is adorable. I don't care who you are, this is cute. Now, somebody might ask me, why is it that I don't just thread both of these onto my needle and then put them down where my stitch marker is? I could do that, but I like the idea of just tying them together on the inside to make it just a little bit more secure, because you know as babies get these, they're gonna grab those ears and really kind of tug on them. So I like to give any little um, last extra help I can get. Let me get this second ear on here, and then I'm gonna show you how to add the braids to the ear flaps almost done with the hat. It's time for the tassels and then it's complete. 
What you need to do is grab the three colors that you use for the tassels on top of the ears. If you remember, my colors were green, tan, and blue. Once you have those colors, you're going to cut lengths of yarn that are roughly 28 inches long. And you'll have three strands of color for each um, part of the braid. So you're gonna have six total strands of one color, but you're gonna use three strands on one side and three strands on the other. You're gonna do that for three total colors. So I've done that, so I'm gonna set aside the ones that I don't need to use right yet, because I'm gonna use just the side for one side of our flap. So I'm gonna start off with the blue, and I'm gonna have the blue start on the outside. I wanna put the green in the middle, and then I'm gonna put the tan. So I have the blue, I folded it in half, and just like we did for the ears, we're going to look at the wrong side, and working at the edge of our ear flap, I'm going to attach my tassel portion for the braid in the same way. So I pull through, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through this way. Remember, I'm, didn't, I'm doing this with the wrong side facing me. The reason I do that is I like to have this portion on the outside, on the right side, so that's why I do it. So that's the first one. I'm gonna grab my second color. You can have it be whatever you want. I'm gonna choose the green, and I fold it in half and apply this one. Once I do this, I will do the same thing for the tan color. Once you have all three colors attached, it's time to simply braid these colors. And in case you don't know how to braid, I'm gonna show you how to do a three strand braid right here. It's really simple. You take the outside, cross over the center, and now your center is to the outside. So you take the outside on the opposite to the center, and now this is to the outside, to the center, to the outside, to the center, the outside, so on and so forth. You're gonna do this until you have about four inches of tassel left, or until you think it's long enough. Now the baby I'm making this for, I know that I don't want him to have a lot of tassel or a lot of cord hanging down, so I'm gonna stop right about there, and I'm going to tie a knot. So I'm simply grabbing all of the yarn together, and I'm just going to tie a knot, all right? Again, this is totally a preference thing. If you want it longer, you can absolutely make this longer. I'm just gonna tie the knot, making sure that it ends at the bottom of the braid and not too far down. Once I get all the knot in place, is the way I want it here, I can go back and I can trim up these, uh, the tassel portion that's left. I'm gonna wait until I get the other side done before I do that. Both of the braids are complete and I have these really nice long tassels and it's time to trim them up. So what I'm gonna do is fold the hat in half and line up my braids as best as possible. Hopefully they're about the same size. Yay, that's a happy accident. All right, so they're right there and I have this nice long tails. Now if you have one of those rotary cutters, you could use that right now. If you don't, Use your scissors and trim up the tassels as short as you want them to be. I think I want these to be right about there. I don't want them super long. And I'm using the nice lines on my cutting board here as my guideline. So I'm going straight across. Check that out. I have these nice little tails. Ah ha! Making it rain. Ha <laughs> ha! And I can move those aside. <laughs> and I have a completed hat, you guys. So adorable. I really hope you enjoyed making this owl baby hat and you will run out, grab your yarn and hook and get started on your very own. If you liked today's video, please hit subscribe so you're up to date. Whenever there's a new video released, you can come back and check out more right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Please go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. Thanks. All right. All you need to do to complete this dishcloth is to work until it measures about eight inches or to the size you desire.